Dr. Katie Thompson is, is our next speaker, joining us here on stage. Uh, she is the, uh, well, she's an entrepreneur, she's a scientist, she's a dynamo, uh, and co-founder of Elemental Enzymes with her husband, Brian. Uh, I did mention that she completed her PhD here at uh, MU in developmental cellular and molecular biology, and has gone on to then take uh, technologies that came out of MU research and, and, and taking that and developing it into a successful and growing company. They went through the uh, Missouri uh, uh, Innovation Center's Life Sciences Incubator here. Uh, so the story of Elemental Enzymes, I think, is very uh, fitting with our theme today. Uh, she believes in a, in a kind of bootstrap, pull yourself up by the bootstraps philosophy of how they've grown their company. I think she's probably performed every role possible in the company, from, from reception to accounting to finance to, well, you, we'll hear from Katie. And so please welcome in, in, me in, in uh, please join me in welcoming uh, Dr. Katie Thompson. Thank you. Thank you. It's always great back. It's always great to be back at my alma mater. See familiar faces and friends in the audience. Uh, hopefully not too intimidating. I've come a long way in public speaking uh, since I was a student here. Uh, but today I'm mostly going to tell a story about entrepreneurship and sort of how it's done and kind of alleviate some of that mystery for you know how, how do you go from a researcher. Um, to um, an executive or running a business, and what does that look like early on, um, kind of coming out of a university, um, a university background? Um, and also uh, later today we'll have Brian Thompson. He'll be on a panel. He's a co-founder with me and partner in crime. Um, and so I enjoy you to stay for that part of the talk today, so, or that part of the symposium today. Um, so. Without further ado, Becoming Elemental Enzymes. Uh, we're an innovative life sciences company for agriculture. So it all starts with an invention. And in our case, that invention, uh, that inspiration came from this building and the, uh, the lab of Dr. George Stewart. Uh, Brian was a postdoc in the lab with Dr. Stewart. And they came up with this methodology for using microbes to make and stabilize enzymes. Uh, very early on, they also worked and collaborated with Dr. Lin, who you saw talk earlier today, um, and the foundational stages of that technology. Um, so it was invented here. The university um, started the patent. It was patented. The very first patents were written by the university here. Um, but as Brian was finishing his postdoc and I was finishing my PhD, um, we were, you know, we were newly married, um, getting ready to go out and find our way in the world or find some jobs. <laughs> Sick of being graduate students and, and postdocs for a while. He's, Brian came to me and said, what if we license this technology uh, back from the university uh, that he had helped invent? Because it was still in its infancy, infancy kind of. Um, we could see the applications for the technology. They have broad applications. But an exact product concept for an exact industry wasn't really there at that point. There were a lot of really good ideas. Um, well, anyway, long story short, I said yes. Um, and so we started learning more. Um, we used all the resources that we could find here at the university, which are quite numerous. So Ryan started taking classes with the SBTDC, Small Business Technology Development Center. At that time, we worked with uh, Paul Bateson and Jim Gann to start to develop a business plan. Uh, I took classes at Ready. Uh, I learned QuickBooks, um, learned the basic finances of starting a business, how to make a corporation, how to start an LLC, um, all of those questions. Um, we also licensed that technology from University of Missouri. This is kind of back in 2011. Um, and at this point, we needed to find somewhere to be. Um, despite all efforts, Brian really wanted to be a garage startup. Uh, Microbiology is not really made for the garage, so that was kind of tough. <laughs> but luckily, we have a great facility here in Columbia, um, the MU Life Science Business Incubator. And we were able to you know, scrape together enough. Um, we were kind of doing a little bit of friends and family or credit card and loan type rounds then. Um, to rent a space, we started renting a quarter of a lab <laughs> at the business incubator. But that got our foot in the door. Um, and we started working with uh, students in the MBA class that were writing business plans. 
Uh, so we worked with Quentin Messberger, and at that time it was Jake Holiday. And they're like, Jake's like, do you want us to put your technology in with these business students so they could practice writing business plans as part of uh, this high growth venture class at Mizzou and actually met in the incubator? And we said, yeah, sure. Um, at that point, we were writing our business plan on remediation, uh, much like that atrazine story Chung Ho was telling earlier. And we said, but don't tell them what industry to pick. Let, let's see what they find in their market research. Let's them try to find an industry. Uh, so the students, uh, they wrote a business plan, and it was on um, enzymes and detergents. Um, it was a really big market, but our technology had some advantages for um, stabilizing enzymes in harsh conditions, and I mean, that's a lot of enzyme to make. And it, well, maybe it wasn't quite the right fit, but we had a good idea. <laughs> um, we had some students coming up with good ideas. Um, and so I was able to work with those students to write another business plan. And this time we wrote it on remediation. And we submitted it to the Rice Business Plan competition. And because I was a student in the last year, I was able to go and present. And I call this part the MBA by fire, um, <laughs> where there's 400 teams that apply to the Rice Business Plan competition. 40 get selected to go down to Houston and present in front of CEOs and COOs. And, and I, at this point in time, I really wasn't that confident with my business acumen. It was like six months, you know. Um, but I went down there with the team, and we got grilled. Uh, we actually lost the first round. Uh, we got knocked out by number one and number two in the business, in the competition, in the first round. But we went to the Shark Tank round. Anybody ever seen the show Shark Tank? Watch that a lot. Yeah, it was intense. But I found myself there better able to think on my feet and answer the questions. Um, because of the background um, and the, the understanding of the technology and really desire to move that technology forward. Um, but that was an important um, kind of learning experience, at least for me personally, around the same time. These are some of the people in our lab now. Um, so I mentioned we were kind of doing uh, friends and family rounds. We actually had our friends and family bound matched uh, by the Missouri Technology Corporation. So there's a lot of... Um, there's a lot of sources to get funding. I think Chung Ho mentioned uh, SBIR grants. We looked at them at the time. Um, but there's a lot of opportunities out there for entrepreneurs. I know another, you know, a lot of startups and accelerators and other incubators. Um, but for us, we were able to match with the uh, Missouri Technology Corporation. And through work with the Missouri Innovation Center, which is housed in the business incubator, we were able to start approaching angel investors. Um, but I'm actually going to go back one second, and the important part about getting a business off the ground, we heard this before, is not always what you know, but a little bit of networking and, and who you know and who you meet along the way, and being open to those relationships. So we actually met an individual through the students. He was actually a judge of the students, and he does it every year, and he enjoys it. I think he, he funds the prize for the students at the end of the semester, um, but his name was Steve Trampy. And he had some experience working with other startups um, in a variety of industries. Um, and he actually joined us around our friends and family round and helped us uh, create and craft our pitch for the angel investment round, um, which was really, really advantageous and strategic for us at the time because we were actually able to, yes, we wrote a business plan on remediation, and we had lots of numbers. Numbers look great, which, by the way, we got pretty close to. Um, uh, growth curve. Um, but what we really sold on was that we had a platform technology and that we could pivot and we could move with the information that we found out about the markets or a, about the applications of the technology as it was developed. So we raised money with the angel investment round. We actually raised um, double of what we were asking for. Um, which was a really good move. If someone's willing to give you money, make sure that you, you, you take it. Um, because we haven't actually raised money since, which is really unusual um, for a biotech startup. Um, and this is part of that bootstrapping, but part of our desire um, to want to create something and grow somewhat um, naturally in, in our growth as a company. Um, so throughout the years, we've had um, collaborations with ME researchers. And I'm not really 
Uh, also, collaborations with the university. We actually still um, rent and use field space here at the University of Missouri, as well as commercial partnerships. Um, I'm on the wrong one, looking at my notes. <laughs> so here's sort of a little bit of timeline of uh, how we were able to progress. And I think the important part was that commercial partnerships. So while we were angel investing, um, we met a lot of individuals. And some of those angel investors were 25-year veterans from Monsanto. And, and I kid you not, this is actually how it happened. I said, OK, they were, they were kind of interested in this idea of enzymes. Um, I don't think they really understood completely what enzymes do. They were very interested in it, and uh, we presented our technology, and they said they came back, and we had some meetings, and they said, well, have you thought about what an enzyme could do for a plant, or what your technology could do for plants and agriculture? And honestly, Brian's background is in microbiology, immunology. My background's in molecular biology and cell signaling. No, we had not thought about what having delivering a stabilized enzyme to soil and having that ability could do for agriculture. But uh, we went back to the literature, Brian did, we went back to research, and we realized that we actually had some of the enzymes already created in our own library that could have an effect on plants. And you know, the literature was pretty wide, and there were numerous reasons why maybe it hadn't worked out before. But we actually went ahead and said, OK, let's just take our whole library, whatever we have so far, and let's, uh, we went and bought some lights, <laughs> um, actually at the hydroponics store, and grew some plants in our lab space <laughs> um, by adding um, enzymes that actually hold broth to them um, because that was economical, right? And that's what we had access to. And what we saw was we saw a, a really good growth increase in the plants. We were like, wow, this is pretty awesome. It wasn't always the enzymes that you would have predicted from literature that would do that. <laughs> we had good ideas of the modes of action of these enzymes. We, we had hypothesized pretty far. We weren't really for sure at that point, but through the commercial partnerships, we were able to bring in these plants, literally bring in plants, to seed companies, and they agreed to put our uh, products in field trials and plant them and run them um, and collect the data. So we were like, sure, this sounds great. That was kind of in the spring of 2013. Um, and then in fall of 2013, we went out to the field, and uh, we literally did go out to the field because we didn't have any data yet, and we needed to collect the corn. <laughs> um, but we also waited for the data to come in, and we realized we had 7.9 bushels per acre, about a 5% increase in the yield of corn as a, a seed treatment um, for one of our products. And, and because the data was done by a third party um, that they really trusted, um, Air crop science and, and through a lot of other vetting, <laughs> um, license that technology. And that's really how we got our first pivot. As soon as we got the yield back, we said, OK, we're going to turn into ag because this is where success is leading us. And so what I really want you to hear from this talk today is agility is, is important uh, for entrepreneurship and for startups. What you think you're going to do, what you think might not always be the case, it's important to get out there and talk to um, anyone you can in the customer chain early on. All right. So we opened a lab in St. Louis, and we had a second license. And then we also ha had a really a second pivot. Uh, we really started out as a custom R&D type company. I mean, there was a lot of milestones and hurdles there to get this first product um, through development uh, with Bayer. Um, but um, at the same time, we were still developing other ideas and product concepts. And those were getting closer to being able to be commercialized. And our different products have different paths to market, um, some of which in the future will still be licensed opportunities, and some of which we're bringing to market ourselves. And so we launched um, quite a few products in the last two years. And we've really done another pivot of less of a service type custom company and custom R&D to more of a product driven company. Now, right now, they're private label products, uh, but we're working towards um, ha having some of our own um, branding and identity behind some of those products. So I mentioned we expanded to St. Louis. We did get our start here in the incubator. We actually ran out of lab space in the incubator. It was totally full um, when we were there. I was pushed out down the hall. 
we looked everywhere in Columbia to rent space, anywhere we could go to get laboratory space in Columbia. And um, unfortunately, that led us outside of Columbia. Um, and we were able to, uh, we actually purchased this building. It's actually an old Monsanto building um, that had a, a laboratory in it and some plant growth rooms and things like that that we needed back in 2015. So since those initial uh, patents that were filed with the university, we've expanded. We have 21 US patent applications, 93 global patent applications, and five issued patents. Uh, right now, we're at 31 employees. You can kind of see our number fluctuates a bit, especially in the summer when we have a lot of interns and seasonal help. Um, we have uh, full-time in Columbia. Uh, we have a couple of individuals here that still run our field trial program. We actually have a site in Jacksonville, Florida, as well, um, where we run our citrus program. We have a couple of products that are um, really directed towards citrus greening. Um, we're very much scientific staff, 87% scientific staff. So as part of that pivot and getting the traction with those uh, initial products that uh, we're launching direct to distribution, um, we, we are building more of a commercial team. <laughs> you, you really have to service those uh, customers in a big way. So that's a lot of where we're headed now. Um, Chunko touched on diversity, and I wanted to include this in my talk today because it's really important to not only how we got here, but how we're sustaining innovation and how we're moving forward. I, I, I think this is really key, right? So Brian and I met in this building with diverse backgrounds, and we have scientists from diverse backgrounds, and we approach ag with a, a different mindset, um, which has been really important to us. The foundational technology was originally thought of as a vaccine delivery system, um, and now we're using it um, to deliver enzyme actives to soil. Um, so you can kind of see there's that, there's that uh, big transition there. Um, so our team has diverse backgrounds. Um, we take our people to the field. Um, it's amazing um, how important it is. I mean, first off, we realized how important it was because we, you know, been to a cornfield for maybe family or something, but not research when we started the company. Uh, we work with researchers who've been developing ag products for years at other large companies who had not been to a cornfield. So, I mean, and bridging that gap and letting our scientists see how the products are actually used in real life scenarios or, or going to see uh, products at a Farm Progress show and see how those products are pitched to customers help everyone in the process of product development think about, um, and the warm brains the better, think about how is that really gonna be used to kind of shorten that distance. And of course we celebrate our successes together. Um, oops, wrong one again. So our mission is to innovate custom biotech products for sustainable agriculture, environmental, and animal health practices. We do have some environmental projects still going on, and animal health as well, although I have to admit, a lot of the animal health ideas actually start to fund innovation in ag ideas as well, um, so there's a bridge there. Uh, we want to be a leader in innovation uh, through creative research and development. One of my personal goals is how do we scale and grow the company and still keep innovation? We have 20 plus products in our pipeline right now. Uh, how do we keep that going whenever everyone's working on um, finishing a product? Finishing a product is very different from innovation. Um, so, so how do we maintain that is a big question. Um, our strategy, we want to lead with innovation, operate with speed and poise. You know, anytime we can shorten that distance from the bench to the field is important. Uh, the multidisciplinary approach is important. It's, it's important for generation of new ideas. Um, and, and then part of the shortening the distance is also anticipating and planning for product concerns. No one likes a surprise at the end of the day that something's not compatible or doesn't work right in its intended use. So what's next for us? Focusing on going from a good company to a great company by realizing what got us to this point isn't necessarily going to get us to the next point. Um, you know, part of that is imparting a lot of the knowledge and attitude of having a small startup uh, to new employees and supervisors as we grow. I mean, we all get together. It, we want to make it a great EE, a great place to work, because we still want to work there. <laughs> so if we have a problem uh, or something that needs to get out in a short amount of time, we get everyone together. It's a lot of teamwork and collaborative um, success. So we want to make sure this first round of products are successful. And uh, we want to continue to create more partnerships 
in agriculture, animal health, and environmental industries. And we're always looking for great people. Um, so specifically are the great people, though, if you know anyone that does regulatory work, <laughs> or interest in regulatory work, maybe interns interest in regulatory work, or um, commercial technical sales, those kinds of things, come talk to me. Or just researchers and scientists. We hired, our most recent PhD was hired from Mizzou uh, this last fall. And she's been a great addition to the team. That's it. Any questions? Thank you, Katie, uh, for that pr great presentation. We have a few minutes for questions. Um, so please, fire away. Uh, questions for Katie and, uh, about elemental enzymes. Right. Sumner. Yeah, it's great to see local talent do well and grow and prosper, so congratulations uh, and all the best for continued success. My question really is, uh, can you be more specific about the enzymes that you're using in ag and that you're putting in the soil? Are these nitrogenases, phosphatases, or? Um, some, some, yes. I can't be super specific. We have a variety of different modes of actions, but essentially the same way that the microbes in your gut are producing enzymes and living symbiotically with you to help you digest your food. We're sort of thinking of it from the same point of view around a plant and around a plant's roots um, and how it, plants naturally live with their environment. So we are creating substrates that feed the plant directly um, or feed the organisms around the plant. Those are certainly our first targets um, because uh, they're not regulated. Um, as we move further, we're actually looking at more uh, proteins and peptides that uh, stimulate the immune system of plants and looking at it from more of a disease focus. But those pesticidal products take quite a long time to get to market. And uh, without more fundraising rounds early on, it was sort of impossible to get those out there. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that question. Uh, I believe we have, uh, well, I think one more question. Yes, yeah, sure. Whole broth. Would you uh, elaborate on the concept of this whole broth? fermentation? Like we just okay, we so just took the the cheapest, most possible way to make something, and just used it straight. Shotgun approach. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Because we because if you're going to keep it inexpensive to be able to use for agriculture, really don't want to add any additional purification because that would drive up the cost. And so if it was going to work, it had like at its most basic. That's how we needed to work. We also tested a lot of different soils and uh, ha had a little bit of a different approach um, to that. We were thinking, okay, if this has to work in a field, like later this year, I don't have time to test everything in the world. Um, okay, I think we have time for one more question. And I see a hand raised there in the back. Thank you. Dr. Myers. Uh, this is really short and probably a really dumb question, but what I, I might have missed it. What is the application? Is it on the seed, or what's the mo mode of uh, application? We have products with uh, multiple application methods. So our first one that's licensed to bear is a seed treatment application. Uh, we also, uh, the products that we've commercialized more recently are soil applications of products. And then um, we also have some foliar products as well in foliar application. Okay, well, thank you very much, and uh, please. And if you want to come talk to me later, I'm happy to talk if you didn't get your question answered today. And, you know, I know the product part is the really interesting part. I get that, and that's what scientists are interested in, but I was hoping to um, inspire someone to make the jump to entrepreneurship. Excellent. Thank you so much, yeah. uh, Dr. Thompson. Thanks, sir. <laughs>